Hey everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I have a great video prepared for you. If your doctor wants to run a SIBO breath test, there are certain precautions that you need to take prior to being tested. Now today we're going to be talking about what those precautions are. In other words, these are things that could change a positive test into a negative one, uh, as well as the preparation or things you need to do prior to performing a SIBO breath test. Now, I wanted to do this video because last week uh, I sat down with a young lady. Uh, she's constantly bloated. She's constantly experiencing digestive problems, IBS. Uh, she's constipated. She's, a, she's in a tremendous amount of pain, aches through, all throughout her body. She's in a, this perpetual state of brain fog. She's losing weight and she's just getting sicker and she doesn't have any answers. And she's, she's been jumping from doctor to doctor in desperation of some, some answers. Now, we're going to go over, um, or I should say we're, we were going over her test results and her SIBO uh, breath test came back negative. But when we started talking about how she did the test and the preparation for the test, she told me that she had purchased the test from a doctor on the internet. And herein lies part of the problem. You see, it quickly became apparent that she missed some very, very critical steps in the preparation of this test. Now, I don't want to see this happen to you. And it's also for this reason, you really need to be working with a doctor who is going to sit down with you and explain to you how to do these tests. And also one that has experience with people who have SIBO, not just someone who's out there just selling a bunch of tests. So part of what you're gonna learn in today's video is how you need to prepare for the SIBO breath test. Now, some of the points that I want you to take away and some of the things I want to address with you is what you can't eat prior to this test, okay? I also want to talk to you about what you need to do the night before the test, what you need to do for the day of the test, medications that you're going to need to discontinue, the diet that you're going to need to follow for at least two weeks leading up to the test, because there are certain situations that can arise where even after following all the proper steps that we're going to be talking about today, that a test comes back negative, yet you still have overgrowth, okay? So I'm gonna shed some light on why that happens as well and what you should do if that, uh, if that situation arises. So with that being said, let's kind of just jump right into this. So how to prepare for the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, overgrowth test. So number one, for accurate test results, you have to avoid certain foods, you have to avoid certain drinks, you have to avoid supplements, you, have to, you might have to avoid certain medications because many times the foods we eat, the, the, um, the beverages that we drink basically are broken down, they're metabolized um, into hydrogen or methane gas. And as you can imagine, because that's what the SIBO breath test measures, this can have an impact on your test results. So I advise you that you follow a low FODMAP diet for a couple weeks prior to testing, okay? So let's get into some of the basics. Now, number one, if you've had a recent colonoscopy or you've had a barium enema procedure, you're gonna need to wait at least four weeks before using this test. Also, it's important if you're taking any kind of oral broad spectrum antibiotic or any kind of bismuth preparation, such as Pepto-Bismol or natural supplements that contain bismuth, that you wait a minimum of two weeks prior to running this test, okay? And that's very important. Two weeks is a minimum. Again, four weeks or longer might be better. Now, you also need to avoid all laxatives. This is very, very important. And I know this is kind of like the catch-22 because for many people that have constipation, they are taking laxatives, okay? So it's best that if you avoid all laxatives, it's best that you avoid stool softeners or any kind of stool bulking agent for at least one week prior to the test. That means things like colace, things like milk of magnesia, things like Exlax, things like Metamucil or Citrusel. And yes, you also need to avoid any natural supplements that you're taking that also might have the same or similar effects. Now, what about prescription medications? Well, except oral antibiotics, um, basically most medications that you might be taking are okay to take. Um, vitamins and supplements, well, you can take them as long as they don't contain, again, those FODMAPs or they have gluten fillers or binders in them. Some common places that you find these FODMAPs is in your supplements. They may be in probiotics, they may be in prebiotics. They could be and often show up in food-based vitamins. Um, they could be found in protein shakes. So I usually recommend that these are discontinued at least two weeks, one to two weeks prior to the test. Again, the longer the better in this situation. Now, Diet preparation, 24 hours before the test, what do you want to be eating? Well, again, you want to follow a low FODMAP diet. So again, you're going to want to avoid things like beans. You're going to want to avoid wheat, multigrain, 
whole grains, all fruits, brand cereals, tofu, nuts, rye breads, and virtually any kind of high fiber food. Now, what I did to kind of make this a little bit simpler, because again, that's just a small example. There's probably, a, there's a lot more. In fact, if you go, um, I put together on my website, you can download a list of foods to avoid. Uh, just by going to my website, you can download that free dietary guide on FODMAPs. And so I'll post a link for that uh, at the end of this article as well. So you might be thinking, is that all I have to do? And the answer is no. Uh, you should also fast before running this test. That means no food uh, eight to 10 hours before running the test. You can have water, but think of this like uh, a test as if you were going to have your blood drawn. Again, if you were looking for a fasting blood draw test, you wouldn't want to have anything to eat or drink uh, with the exception of water eight to 10 hours prior to that test being done. So again, same thing applies here. Okay, so that brings us to the day of the test. Number one, this is very important that you do not eat, eat chew gum or tobacco, smoke cigarettes, or, uh, or anything else of that nature, chew tobacco prior to the test. Okay, this test lasts about two hours. So again, you don't want to take a nap between the test. You don't want to go to sleep before, uh, in between in, in this interim of these two hours. You don't want to exercise during the test. Your mind and your focus needs to be on just getting through these next two hours, okay? Now, when you uh, take the SIBO breath test, your doctor will have decided on whether or not he or she wants to run a uh, glucose breath test or a, a dextrose breath test or a lactulose breath test, okay? Each has its benefits and drawbacks, and because I've talked about these in other videos, I'd encourage you to go back and watch those videos for an explanation of, of those, okay? Now, if you work with an experienced doctor, they're going to select the appropriate test for you, or at least let's hope they're going to select the, the test that's most appropriate for you. And one thing that's very important, again, and again, part of why we're doing this video is let's hope that they explain the preparation of the test to ensure the accuracy. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that even after doing everything correctly on the preparation and the precautions, you can still have a negative test, okay? Whereas uh, all the reasons that we've mentioned up to this point are human error, okay? The one problem that you can't avoid, and this is no fault of your doctor, it's no fault of you, and it basically has to uh, do with the fact that not all bacteria in the small intestines produce hydrogen. This is why you want to be tested for hydrogen and methane, okay? Now, most people that have SIBO, it's true, they are hydrogen producers, but some produce methane, and that's very important that when you get tested, that you get tested not only for the hydrogen, but you also get tested for the methane, and that's a very, very important uh, point. If you test negative to methane as well, you still could have SIBO in the upper part of your small intestines, and sometimes this is why uh, um, uh, um, uh, a glucose breath test or even a dextrose breath test might be a better, um, a better test for, for that kind of scenario. Remember, lactulose breath tests are, are much more accurate for the distal portion or the lower portion of the small intestines, okay? So the next problem I see happening is that some labs only produce a positive or a negative test result. And I don't like these kinds of tests uh, because simply I like to interpret the data. I like to look at the raw data. I like to interpret the numbers in context of many other factors and symptoms and signs that a patient may have. So there you have it. Some of the steps that you'll want to take in order to maximize the accuracy of that SIBO breath test. I hope you enjoyed today's short video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website and click on the conditions tab uh, called SIBO, okay? You'll see there that that free download that I mentioned earlier today uh, outlining the diet that you'll want to follow is located uh, in that section of my website, all right? You'll also find a lot of great other articles that I've written uh, as it relates to SIBO and skin conditions, SIBO and thyroid problems. There's a very strong correlation between uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and thyroid problems. So if you're a person that suffers with either skin problems, thyroid problems, chronic pain, this SIBO breath test is, a, is an invaluable test that can really shed a, light, a, lot, a lot of light on, on why you're suffering, okay? So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed today's video.